Hey, so I want to make a short video um, about how to draw single line diagrams inside of Revit. You can do it multiple ways. Um, you could, you know, do it in AutoCAD and then bring it in. You could draw um, detail lines or you can even do um, detail groups. So uh, for now, for the simplest method to keep all of your single lines contained inside of Revit is to draw it with detail line inside of a detailed view. The AutoCAD method is okay if you have an existing work that you want to bring in but I try to reduce the amount of linked files just because like if you ever need to send the model or um, if you have your uh, saved model inside of BIM 360 and then your CAD files are either on your desktop or on a company server that link can be easily broken and then somebody might not get the updated file or you know they can work on an out of date one so it's best to keep everything contained inside of Revit so that's what I'm going to show you how to do here. Okay, so here I have a demo project that I started and inside there's drafting views with um, a couple families of single line diagram elements in here. Now you can see like if I click on this transformer, it's one entity. So you can drag that and move it onto your single line diagram and draw your connectors in between. So there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. You got panels, you have fuses, disconnects, um, your transformers, your motor loads. You even have like, you know, your draw out connections. So like if you're doing a switch gear that you have draw out breakers, you would use this. Uh, so I pick and choose from here and I move everything down as I need to. Um, if you're done with this and you don't want to remove it, I have this habit of just hiding it. And then if I need to come back and grab something else, I just unhide this. That way everything's easy to grab. I don't have to go up here looking for, um, I think under components or something, or I think it's annotation symbols. So if you don't have this, it's all buried in here. So it's just a little easier to have it in front of you. Um, that's just my take on it. So it's very simple. You start by grabbing, um, I don't know, maybe we'll, we'll grab a transformer or something. We'll grab a transformer. Um, we'll bring a panel board down. I will try to, nope, oh, I missed. So I'll put it kind of close to here. So we need to draw, we need to draw some feeders. Um, normally I would have a single line new existing and demo set up, but for some reason this one's not quite set up yet. So we're just going to draw with a line that kind of matches what we have here. So I believe it's pen style three. There we go. So pen three, and then um, we need feeder annotations. Do we not have feeder annotations? Huh. Okay, so maybe it's in here. Feeder, feeder number, perfect. That's what I want. I like it on the right. So this tells me what my one, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna shrink that a little bit. Sometimes it's a little big. So this tells me um, how many wires. So I'll do a, actually I'll do a four wire um, 110 amp feeder. And then, oh, of course, it's a little off. Mm. There we go. Okay, I'll leave it at that. And I could probably squeeze another digit if I need to. But here's my transformer and we can do delta primary Y secondary. And there you go, that's your symbol. Um, then you want to include some extra information such as, you know, uh, transformer from T1 or something, give it a name. And then you want to include, mm -hmm. come on, cancel. No, okay, I wanted to stretch that out a little. So you have your name, uh, you typically want to give it your transforming voltage. So it's 480 volts to 208, 120 volt. Um, you can say, you know, if, if you had a harmonic mitigation or something, you could do like K13, uh, type it in here, but I'm just gonna leave that blank. So there's, there's your transformer. Oh, and specifically the size. So I don't know, do like a 45 KVA or something. And if you have the information, room name, room number, so put that all by your equipment. Um, here, we'll make some of, that, some of that up. So elect room one, two, three, four. All right, so we'll park that right here on the right hand side, justified left. We'll have your feeder size. And then down here, you have your panel board. So panel board has um, 
parameter values. So it's nice because the text stays with it. So like up here, if I were to grab this transformer and move it, you know, the text stays behind. But the panel has has uh, parameter values here. So you could say panel RP1. Um, we'll say, I don't know, elect room one, two, three, four, and maybe I like to put um, the voltage in here just so that if there's any errors on top, it'll be recognized. Like, you know, this should match that. And then the other bit of information, which I like to include, and it hasn't been worked into this family yet, is the breaker type, if, it, if it's main lug only or main circuit breaker. So after a transformer, you always need a secondary protection within 25 feet. So that means this panel needs to have a main circuit breaker. So I like to put that there. It um, clarifies to the permit people that they know we, we are protecting that. Otherwise, you'd have to go to the panel schedule to figure that out and um, it could just be a little annoying. So on the primary side, let's fin finish this out. Sometimes you, oh, yeah, let's do this, line three, yeah. So we'll have a feeder. Actually, I don't know if this is sized correctly right now. I'm not, I'm not gonna try to figure out the sizing. Um, what we'll do is be remotely right in three wire, I don't know, 60 amp or something. Not amps, I don't need the A. <clears throat> so do a primary feeder, a secondary feeder, and then you can throw in a breaker on your primary side if you want. So copy that over. And I think for some reason the enclosure is not part of this. Yeah, we don't have an enclosure. So if this is a dedicated enclosure, I would do something like that. And then have your <clears throat> ECB-1, enclosed circuit breaker. Um, you can do I don't know, 60 amp frame with uh, 60 amp trip, something like that. And then you can use the rest of this. So, something like that, and to utility. So this I might specify in more detail, exactly what the utility is, what they're bringing in, et cetera. So this might be four wires, I'm not sure. So it depends on you know how they come in. You might, it, it might be bringing in the neutral too. And then you, you don't need the neutral here because you have a Delta transformer. Um, so yeah, something like that. And I start piecing it together. Then you have to make sure things look pretty. So like here, I might, drag this up a little bit to give it some more space. Some people are very exact and actually <clears throat> some people are very exact. So you see how here that's exactly one inch and here I actually have it. I think I landed it right in the middle. So you go until you see a triangle. There's a triangle. So that's your midpoint and you can actually take this, copy it up here. Yeah, I'll delete that. Take all of this, move it up. Actually, land that right here. So then now this, you can do exactly to midpoint as well. So an inch above and an inch below. It looks like I didn't match it, but I think I did. Yeah, so the other part of single line diagram is to make sure that you have your um, your drawings in a neat and orderly fa neat and orderly fashion. So if you have it just all hodgepodge, whatever, thrown left and right, no justification, it looks like a mess. So I like to make sure it's in a clean line. You have all your labels consistent. So um, the, even the size of the feeder tags, they like to be. It's good to have them the same size. And then you get down to your your panel, and you could stop there. Uh, obviously, you can get a lot more complicated. If you're doing substations, if you're doing campus-wide distribution, a single line diagram can get way over the top. You can have so much information in there that people could they could actually bid and build off of the single line diagram if they wanted to. Um, obviously, the layout might be a little challenging to figure out. So this is a, the, the most simple single line diagram you probably could have. You have something coming in, you're transforming it, you're sending it to a panel, 
And then once you get down to panel RP1, you, um, the rest of the branch circuiting is determined by uh, panel schedule. If you were going to a um, like a distribution panel, then you would draw this out. Um, you wouldn't you wouldn't make a, such a small box. You would do a um, you would at least start with the bus. So your bus would be in the middle. Um, you would have your information on here. So I don't know, say uh, 225 amp bus with um, 208. 120 volt three actually I always forget what the number is so three pH for phase three phase uh, bus I put bus too soon so something like this land it right here then take a breaker so this would be your secondary breaker here drop that here and then a feeder to finish that off. Now I would grab the node before I, um, it's called a berry, but I call it a node. So take this and put it right here. So that shows that you're connecting to the bus here. Um, you also wanna show your termination of the bus. So this is, this is a termination and if you were to if you wanted a, um, a bus plug at the end, or not a bus plug, uh, if you want expansion feed through lugs, if you wanted feed through lugs at the end, you can do a box and then you'll have to call that out by a note. So this signifies that it can be expanded in the future just by continuing the bus in another panel. So once that's in, um, you have to make sure you enclose that in a box and then you can put your panel information like up here or something like that so here you know panel rp1 um give it your voltage or actually since you're since you have the bus here you don't need to do the voltage amperage and all that stuff so you could just be like electric room one two three four and park it right here then personally i always put my aic rating over here so twenty two thousand aic and if you don't know what that is, that is your rating of um, available inrush current. So technically it's short circuit current rating. So that's what the panel's rated to. But at this point in the line, you can expect 22,000 AIC. Um, if, it, if it's a large transformer, you can actually get really high, like 65,000 or even 150,000. So you have to make sure that your available inrush current or your short, short circuit current rating is listed here. So then with, you see me just copying text all over the place. This is honestly my favorite way to do it just because of how flexible it is. Um, I don't like to use the detail grouping just because then I'm limited to what kind of information I, I wanna put in there. And sometimes like a lot of things break out of the norm. So typically a breaker would have three three things. So it'll say, um, let's say like, I don't know, 100 amp frame, um, 100 amp trip and then it'll say three phase but sometimes you want to put like shunt trip or st or electrically electronically operated eo or um, lsig for long short instantaneous and ground so there's a lot of extra things that you want to put into a single line diagram that doesn't fit a prepackaged family so that's why i've been doing lines and text just because then i can make it exactly what i want it to be so let me just delete this um I'm gonna put this, whoops, a little smaller. Some people like it on the right side, some people like it on the left, so I, I typically like it on the right. And this is generally uh, centered, but centered like with what's left. Something that, it, it's a lot of what makes it look pretty. So here, I could line it up here, and that way all my text is straight up and down, but you can see how it's a little far away. Yeah, I'll leave it. So at this point, you can start putting in your feeders. Like if you're sending it directly to another panel or if you're sending it to an HVAC load, you can come out, of, come off of here and do your work then. At a certain point, you have to you know, give your load a tag, a room name, so that they can find it on the floor plan. So I like to use arrays um, when I'm doing a single line diagram just because then everything is clean. So like for this node, you can use, um, yeah, AR. So AR, and let's do like four nodes. 
Uh, I'm going to put the next one at, let's say, one inch. And then there you go. So now I have four connection points. And from here, I'm going to start feeding my other loads. So you have your, oh, wait. Some people can put it right on here. That's actually not that bad because technically your breaker does plug into the bus itself. So eh, maybe, maybe that's not quite right. So I gotta, I think I have to put this on there and then that goes there. So your breaker goes onto the bus and then your feeder runs out of the box. And then you can grab a panel, plop it right there, and there's your panel board. Um, again, sometimes my people like to make this distance ideally one, so we can do we can do that here. There we go. Bring that to the center, and there you go. So now you have your breaker. Let's put this. Oops. So let's move this down here and then you pick a reference point. And there we go. Now it's consistently the same across here. If you can put another one here. Oh, I missed. So you come in here, try to hit the berry right on the nose. Next one here. There we go. All right. So I added a few in here and you could use um you could do spare or something like that. Centered. And then there you go. You got some spares in here and your panel. Okay. Alright, so there's some spares. And then you know, name your panel here. So panel RP1, like we said before, elect room one, two, three, four, etc. Um 208, 120. So then from at this point, you could just do MLO. It doesn't have to be a main breaker if you don't want it to be. So there you go. So that's how I would draw a simple single line diagram um, with a couple of pre-made families. And then from there, I would draw the rest of it by hand. The idea is that a single line diagram should convey what the design is intended to be. Uh, show the circuiting, show the rating, show the location, and uh, do so in a neat and orderly fashion. So make sure, like, if you have multiple panels across the bottom, that they're all at the same height. Uh, all the feeder labels are at the same height. Maybe give it give it space, too. Don't crunch everything together in the smallest space possible, because if you have to add anything in the future, it's going to be really hard to do. Plus, it's just easier to read when it's... You know, take the space you have. Like, if you have a whole sheet, use it. Don't try to cram everything into a small view. So this is how I typically do my own single line. Uh, if you want to copy this, uh, check the engineering because I don't know if I sized my primary and secondary and all this stuff correctly. Uh, usually, you know, this is I would lay it out and then I would do some do some engineering after this. So uh, this is very basic. Like I said, you have your incoming, your transformer, you step it down to uh, a lower voltage to a distribution panel, and then you distribute it. So if you want me to try something a little more complicated, uh, let me know. But I just wanted to show you the gist of how I start a single line diagram. So I grab some components, I put it together, I would draw detail lines and put text and um, notes as I need them to go along with the whole design. Um, certain equipment needs like certain pieces of information for a single line diagram to be valuable, such as name, capacity, location, and sometimes ratings and stuff. Uh, but yeah, like the feeder sizes are all super important for the contractor so they know what to run. Uh, this is good for pricing. This is good for, I mean, it's good for bid in general. So they can get a lot of information out of the single line diagram. So something you want to pay attention to, make sure you don't add extra, don't add extra zeros in here. It could be really bad. <laughs> so be diligent when you work on it. Um, other than that, if you have further questions, let me know in the comments below. If you want to talk in more details, join me on Discord. Uh, we have a small team over there going on, so we can we can chat about different topics there. And um, if you want to see behind the scenes, you know, daily work logs and stuff, uh, check out my Patreon. It's also in the link below. All right. Thanks for watching. As always, see you guys next time. Bye.